We're back with some more college basketball action here for Thursday, November 17th, and yesterday was rough. We ended up going 0-3, had a chance with William & Mary, didn't cover that one. The other two really weren't that close, so um, overall, a pretty bad day, but got a pretty nice card on slate here for Thursday, so let's jump right into it. Now, for Thursday, we start out with Bryant taking on FAU. Bryant comes into this one as the 172nd team in the hot to bet power rankings. Florida Atlantic is the 93rd overall team. And, you know, for this FAU team, a massive, massive win on Monday night against Florida. Obviously, opened the season up with that loss to Ole Miss. But um, in that Florida game, and, and really on the season as a whole, FAU has shot the ball fairly well, especially from perimeter, hitting 46.7% from beyond the arc. And now it's hard to put too much weight in. in any of these you know sample sizes um, at this point in the season but a very impressive performance there their defense though does concern me a little bit especially that perimeter defense it has not been the best this season even against Florida um, you know they did allow them to shoot a little bit from beyond the arc and they're going up against the Bryant team that is by no means an easy opponent Bryant comes off their first D1 win of the season against start myth last Friday a 2-0 start for the Bryant Bulldogs here and overall it's a team in Bryant that loves to play fast push tempo push pace pace um, and really control the game from the offensive side of the ball they've been a solid shooting team this season a 56.8 effective field goal percentage on the season and this will be you know a tough in matchup a step up in opponent here against FAU but head coach Jared Grosso um, in his first season in the American East with this Bryant team is looking to get them rocking and rolling you know one guy who's been a major difference early on here LaSalle transfer Sharif Gross Buckle um, comes in dropping 24.5 points per game game so far this season and it's not to say that FAU is you know a bad team because they certainly are I mean obviously getting the win over Florida is no easy task um, but it was a team that last season in FAU was very very young and they do have one of the highest returning minutes in the country um, some of the highest returning point scores um, in Conference USA as well um, and it's a team in FAU who is certainly destined for a strong finish to the season I think you know their postseason will definitely end better than the CBI appearance they had a season ago but the FAU defense scares me. They have some struggles. You know, they looked decent against Florida, struggled a little bit more against the Ole Miss, but they're going up against a Bryant offense um, that can certainly shoot the ball. And if Bryant pushes tempo in this game, I really think it's going to be hard for FAU to slow him down. I'm taking Bryant plus 10 on the road against FAU. Towson looks to keep their undefeated season alive here against UNC Greensboro. Towson comes into this game as the 81st overall team in the high tippet power ranking. UNC Greensboro is the 132nd overall team. And Towson off to a very strong start this season, a 3-0 start to the season. And, you know, I said it in the season preview. I love this Towson team coming into the season. One of my favorite mid-major teams um, of the entire year. And so far, they have played very, very well on both sides of the ball. For UNC Greensboro, still looking for that first Division I win of the season. A loss to Miami, Florida um, in their only Division I game this season. And overall, their defense just really, really struggled in that game. You know, their shot defense um, in that one was near the bottom of the country is effectively where it has put them coming to this one and yes they're going to improve it's not a UNC Greensboro team that is terrible by any means um and and Mike Jones you know has had a some success with this squad but we knew it was going to be an uphill battle for UNC Greensboro coming into the season they lose two of their top three scores from a season ago and you know uh, against Miami they didn't shoot the ball great like I said their defense looked even worse um in that game and I think while they will improve in this game and certainly improve as the season goes on it's not an easy team um, to go up here against Towson. I mean, Towson finishes last year in the Colonial going 15 and 3, 25 and 9 overall, the best record in school history. They do end up missing the tournament, but um, Pascari, you know, is destined to to have more success with this Towson team this season, his 12th season um, as head coach. And yeah, they do lose Terry Nolan from last season, which is definitely, you know, a key piece to last year's team. But it was a team in Towson that certainly found some talent um, here in the offseason. They had a lot of success last season with their strength and athleticism and outside of Nolan they return a lot of guys from last season and you know it's one of those teams in Towson that I'm just super high on going into the season um, I think they're one of the strongest mid-major rosters in the entire country this season and I just don't understand why they're not the favorite here in this game. Going on the road, yeah, it's not an easy place to play. Greensboro has been very, very strong um, in the SoCon the past few seasons, but I really like Towson to come out victorious here, taking them minus 102 here against Ruin C. Greensboro. 
Next up, we got Wichita State taking on Richmond. Wichita State comes into this game as the 105th overall team in the hot to bet power ranking. Richmond is the 88th overall team. For Wichita State, a very disappointing loss on Saturday to Alcorn State. Um, did not look great in that game. Overall, as a team in Wichita State who has struggled to shoot the ball this season, only a 46.6 effective field goal percentage. They struggled even more from the perimeter, only hitting 22.2% from beyond the arc. Certainly not a team that is shocking anyone this season. For Richmond, um, we're able to take Charleston to overtime in their last game. They ultimately do end up losing that game, but I was impressed with how they played in that one defensively this team has been strong um you know some impressive stuff on that side of the ball but the perimeter shooting improved a lot in that charleston game from what we saw um over the first two games for richmond a 32.1 percent um three point shooting percentage on the season one guy who's been or was a major piece of their success last season was tyler burton um he's a guy who really this entire spiders offense can run through really showed up at the end of last season and you know despite losing some talent from a season ago um it's a richmond team that that seems to kind of have picked up from where they left off um, at the end of the season. And, and they do bring in some guys to help fill some of those holes. I mean, Neil Quinn is a guy who transfers in from Lafayette, who certainly provides some size down low for this Spiders team. And I've already bet Richmond here a few times to, or against Richmond here a few times to start the season. But in this spot against Wichita State, I absolutely love this Richmond team to bounce back. I mean, let's be honest, it's a Wichita State team that is really struggling right now. The guy they've really been able to do anything with is Craig Porter Jr., really been the backbone of this team. Team, leading him in scoring rebounds and assists and while i like isaac bruce as their head coach there's just something that this team is missing something that greg marshall was able to bring to this wichita state team that they just have not had these past few seasons i think they continue to struggle um going into this one i think richmond gets a pretty nice win at home taking them minus four and a half here against wichita state a quickly before we get into the back half of the show if you haven't already checked out the website head over to hottipbets.com get college basketball college football nfl nba nhl ufc horse racing picks being posted up every single day also follow the hot tip bets main account at hot tip bets on facebook instagram twitter so you don't miss out on anything that's going on over there follow my personal accounts at hot tip bets chris on instagram tiktok twitter to stay up to date with all the content that i'm putting out as well as follow on best stamp where you get early access to all these picks get a notification every single time that i place up bet and last but definitely not least if you're watching here on youtube hit that like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads and most importantly drop a comment down below let me know who you guys are betting on here for thursday and let's get into these last two games Next up on the car, we got Marshall taking on Miami, Ohio. Marshall comes into this one as the 186th overall team in the hot to bet power rankings. Miami, Ohio is the 267th overall team. And it was a Miami, Ohio team that we bet on against Georgia, um, you know, a few days ago, like probably a week ago at this point, whatever that game happened. Um, it's hard to keep track of some of these games when they happened. But um, for Miami, Ohio, you know, we're able to, to keep that one close. Ended up losing that game by seven points. And they are still looking for their first D1 win of the season. Um, but I was very impressed with how their defense played in that game their shot defense especially um did a very very good job and overall one thing that i absolutely love about this miami ohio team is how well they have done from the free throw line it's no hiding the fact that, like i say all the time i love teams that can hit free throws um and right now miami ohio is the third best team in the country um from that stat 87.5 percent from the charity strike and yeah that number is going to come down as the season goes on but um at this point in time miami ohio is looking very very strong there for marshall started the season off with they lost two queens welcome to them to d1 um giving them that win but they do follow it up with a win over tennessee tech and overall it's a marshall team that has shot the ball pretty well a 53.2 effective field goal percentage they've also been decent from the perimeter hitting 33.9 percent from beyond the arc and overall it's a, it's a marshall offense that is fairly strong but i have some concerns for this team on the defensive side of the things especially their shot defense you know that opening game especially and even a little bit against tennessee tech um was not the greatest they struggled a little little bit there and overall i think it's a defense that's going to struggle going on the road here in this matchup against the miami ohio team that is not bad by any means you know travis Steele in his first year as head coach here is looking to get this team headed in the right direction um mikhail larry leads the way over these first three games dropping 19.3 points per game and overall it's a miami ohio team that did a pretty decent job in the transfer portal bringing in some talent they have a very talented roster a pretty deep roster um considering you know the conference and, and the state of where this team is at and I think it's the Miami Ohio team that can certainly make some noise in the Mac this season. They played very competitive in that Georgia game. I think they play another competitive one here at home, taking them plus five here against Marshall. 
And we head down to Texas for the final game of the day as Texas State takes on UTSA. Texas State comes into this one as the 141st overall team in the hot to bet power ranking. UTSA is the 296th overall team for Texas State. A very, very strong win over Rhode Island on Saturday. Overall, they did a great job shooting the ball in that game. They were hitting seemed like every shot they put up at times in that one but overall a 51.4 effective field goal percentage on the season just a texas state team that is off to a hot hot start utsa on the other hand still looking for that first d1 win of the season while they do have two wins against lesser opponents um you know in that last game st mary's texas or whoever the heck they played that game was way too close for a not D1 opponent. It, they ended up winning that game by like five points. Overall, um, in their only D1 game, they really did struggle to shoot the ball. Only a 40.2 effective field goal percentage on the season. And it's a UTSA that I expected, team that I expected to struggle coming into the season. I mean, they lose their top two scores from a season ago. But overall, from what I have seen out of them so far, they're even more disappointing than I was expecting. Um, you know, they did a decent job bringing in some talent in the transfer portal. And I think as the season goes on, um, that may help. And, and they may be able to get on the same page, maybe able to build some chemistry there. But overall, at the moment, it does not look like a very strong team. It looks like a team that certainly has some more struggles. And they're only saving grace maybe to try and push tempo here in this game. But that's not an easy task against a Texas State team that does a really good job slowing down tempo. I mean, head coach. Terrence Johnson has really built a pretty solid program here. They return a lot of the core pieces um, that this team had last year when they went on that NIT run. Mason Harrell um, has once again been a great scorer for this Texas State squad. 18.7 points per game. And um, overall, like I said, I think Texas State defensively is able to slow this game down, able to control the tempo, um, and able to really control this game from start to finish. I'm taking them minus three and a half here against UTSA.